Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review of Buffy, The Last Vampire Slayer, number two. This is a book from Boom Studios here. Uh, we have the main cover and a few variant covers that uh, were part of the preview that Boom sent us. Uh, man, oh man, this story is uh, really good. So let's take a look at the team um, and then we'll go a little bit more into the actual book. This is written by Casey Gilley. Illustrated by Joe Jaro, uh, colored by Joanna La Fuente, and letters by Ed Dukeshire, or Ed Dukeshire. Um, and wow, it's uh like I said, this this book. Uh, if you caught our review of the first issue, you know that this takes place in an alternate future where Buffy is the last vampire slayer. She's around, uh, I think I believe they said fifty years old. Um, there's been an apocalyptic level event that uh, made the sun where it's it damaged the sun so it doesn't really kill vampires anymore so now we live in a world where human and vampires have this truth so in that world what's this layer to do uh so in this issue itself uh, at the end of the last issue and then this is a slight spoiler for issue one we find out that there's a a, a little girl that comes to buffy uh and she tells her that she's a slayer she's a chosen one and she needs her help um now we I don't remember we find out who the little girl is, but we do find out in this issue for sure. Um, we get a lot into that story. So let me just real quick go over the synopsis here, and then we'll uh, we'll get into it, the issue and let, take a look at some preview art and all that good stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so after a coven rally meant to heal the atmosphere ends in tragedy, uh, Cecily seeks, Cecily's the little girl, uh, seeks out Buffy guided only by the instructions from an old friend. Despite their shared past, Buffy refuses to train her. Instead, she delivers tests to the Watcher's Council, uh, who can certainly be a more suitable guardian. But the Council isn't what they seem, putting Buffy and Thessaly in peril until the intervention of a different group. Uh, so, yeah, most of this issue we spend um, here discovering uh, Thessaly's past. Uh, and if you could tell, I, you know, I won't, I won't go into it. If you could tell from the art, uh, then, then great. Because the what I love about these... What I love about these adaptations is that they don't try to make it photorealistic. They don't try to make it look seem like, uh, you know, these are the the actors themselves. Uh, but they definitely give you a feel of like their gestures and stuff. If you're familiar with the with the TV show, but if you're not, then it's still just a really cool stylized uh, book. Uh, and here we flash back and forth as they're having a conversation, catching up on uh, Thessaly's past. Uh, now, just based on them being part of Coven, if you're a fan of the show, you may figure out uh, where Thessaly comes from. Um, and yeah, I just kind of love the back and forth of this conversation. Uh, and this is before things even get going. Uh, that you know, we don't we don't take a look at a lot of preview, a lot a lot of the art. Uh, I won't go too much into it because then that'll that'll I don't want to spoil the the issue for anyone. But man, this is so so enjoyable. Uh, and like I said, for people that have been following the uh, Buffy and in, in the show and the comics and everything for a little while, uh, it's just really cool to see all these characters once again in a different kind of way. Um, and we've been getting stories like this forever, right? Like we have uh, the Dark Knight Returns where Batman is old man or old man Logan. Uh, even now we have currently going the... TMNT, The Last Ronin, where we see the turtles in the future. So it's always interesting to see this alternate future take of like, you know, in our in in the future, what are our heroes up to? Especially if they're um, if they're kind of put in like strange situations that are out of their norm, uh, and then they've lost their support system, which in this case Buffy really has. Uh, she does have one person that uh, it, they they show up again in this issue, um, but I'll let you guys figure that out. Uh, so yeah, it, I think this is very welcoming. It's just an, it's it's a really cool story for new readers, uh, but for longtime fans of Buffy, I think you get really rewarded for like being you know just being somebody that's followed the franchise forever. So I very much enjoyed it. Uh, like I mentioned, the, the story just keeps getting better and better, and, and the this is definitely escalating. I don't know how long this will be. Uh, the, I believe it'll be a six or five or six issues. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that for sure, uh, and I can't wait. So let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed issue number one, if you're picking this up. I highly recommend you check this out. 
I think the team is really killing it here uh, with story and the art and just making sure that this book comes together. Uh, and it's a little bit oversized. It's longer than a normal comic. So I, w I really enjoy when they take the time to really make it feel important by giving you a few extra issues. So uh, so there it is. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Sundays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. On our last episode, we talked about our favorite stuff from 2021. Uh, but that, we had such a good time that that turned into a part one. We'll be doing a part two later on uh, in, in our next live. So stay tuned for that. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. All the YouTube stuff. Uh, share the video with your friends. Encourage them to read Buffy comics. Encourage them to read comics in general. So thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.